Hi, this is Brian Otten. I'm the Marketing Director with the Greater Wasa Chamber of Commerce. We are on the second to the last uh, interview with a finalist for this year's Athena Awards. Uh, we are joined uh, this afternoon by Beth Tritton. We are over at the Senflex headquarters uh, in Weston and Olivia Hill, a previous recipient of the uh, Athena Leadership Award in the Young Professionals category, which is what Beth is a finalist for, uh, is here to, to help with the interview. So Olivia, Beth, take it away. Thanks, Brian. Um, hi, Beth. Hi. <laughs> Great <laughs> to meet you. <laughs> you too. Thanks for, for giving your time uh, to chat today. Yeah. Um, I'd actually love to start by asking just about, about you and we're here at, at your workplace. So can you just a little quick snippet of, uh, of what you do here and yeah. what you're involved with. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so first of all, I will say I'm really nervous, so <laughs> bear with me. I definitely don't do things like this very often, So, um, but my name is Beth Trittin. I live here in, <laughs> in the Western area, um, and I am one of the co-owners and actually the VP of Human Resources here at Sunflex, mm -hmm. um, and Sunflex is an industrial manufacturing company um, located in the Western Industrial Park. So. Um, I am married and I have three young kiddos, seven, five, and almost three, mm -hmm. um, Natalie, Elijah, and Isaiah. Oh, so, fabulous. Yeah, you got three yeah. little ones. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> well, you tell, uh, there's a lot, you sound very busy. Yeah. <laughs> <You're>, it's <laughs> chaos. <laughs> yeah. It's, um, so my first question is, can you share an example of a time you advocated fiercely for yourself, another person, or a cause? Yeah, okay, so I read this question and immediately went into panic mode because I was like, oh my gosh, what am I gonna say? What if I, what I say isn't good enough? And I just started to really overthink it and have all these negative thoughts. Yeah. Um, so really what I ended up doing is I stopped and I took a deep breath and I started to pray. Um, and I, as I was praying, it became very clear to me that Although I might not have one big compelling story to tell you of a time that I have, um, what I do have is a whole lot of maybe smaller times throughout my life um, that have made an impact. So I was heavily involved in soccer growing up, and so I can remember times, so many times where I had to fiercely advocate for some of those girls on my team, especially around tryouts and mm -hmm. things like that. Um, and then I look at now being a mom, and there have Definitely been times where I've had to um, advocate for each one of my kiddos. Um, and then I look at the role that I play here at Sunflex and being a woman in the manufacturing world, which is a male dominated field, um, I there are so many times where I know I've had to advocate not only for women coming in, but for myself and to feel heard and valued and appreciated. So although I don't necessarily have like a time that I could tell you that I have a big compelling story around, um, I do have a lot of maybe smaller times that I'm really, really proud of that I yeah. look back on. You should be also because I think part of advocacy of what you're talking about is just like showing up every day, mm -hmm. you know? And like you said, for your kids, showing up for them um, in all the many ways, and then showing up. I mean, I always tell people, like, showing up for yourself. Honestly. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's sometimes one of the hardest things to really do. Really hard, actually. really hard, yeah. especially as a mom. Absolutely. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I love it. Yeah. Um, can you share, uh, and this is actually very much related, can you share an example of how you've acted courageously? I mean, and a lot of what you talked about includes being courageous to advocate for all of those things. So, mm -hmm. um, it, yeah, if there's another example. Yeah, so when I saw that question, I immediately thought of two times. Um, the first time was actually moving here to the Wisconsin area. So I grew up in Illinois, mm -hmm. um, and I grew up, um, I was homeschooled mm -hmm. um, in Illinois, and I, although I was involved in a lot of different activities, I was very much in my Illinois bubble, mm -hmm. and I, as I got to college, I had opportunities to go play soccer out of state, mm -hmm that I didn't end up pursuing because I was too afraid and I just didn't have the courage to do. So then a um, number of years ago, I had the opportunity to move up here through marriage and I really felt that God was calling me to be here. And so I ended up mustering up the courage and um, came here and 
Um, obviously, the best the best decision that I ever made. But it really took a lot. Although I was ready to get out of Illinois, um, it really took a lot for me um, to leave to leave that. So, so that was the first time. Um, the second time actually was becoming the VP of Human Resources. So when I first became co-owner, I, um, I, a lot of our leadership team um, wore a lot of different hats, which is common. We're a smaller company, yeah. um, so that's common. And as we made some personnel changes, um, one of the gaps within our organization was the human resources department. Mm -hmm. Um, and by gap, I mean we didn't have one. Yeah. So um, again, I went back to praying about it and ultimately decided to take on that role and fill that gap. And um, I started the human resources department, mm -hmm. um, which really took a lot of courage. I don't have um, an HR background. Mm -hmm. So I <laughs> had, and this was at a time too, um, right before COVID hit, so I had absolutely <laughs> no idea what I was doing, and um, I was terrified. Um, but what I did have was a passion for our people and our employees. And not only that, I had some amazing resources mm -hmm. around me as well. Um, so again, I'm, I'm so thankful for the opportunity for that, but um, those are kind of the two biggest times where I've had to be courageous. And I also, at that time, um, had a newborn. I had a, my second was a newborn. So I was like, all right, here we, here we go. And we're, we're all in. And so, um, yeah, really, really great support, support system, which has been really nice. Yeah. So, yeah. So is, uh, your family still in Illinois? They are. Okay. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So. That can be quite of a, a decision to make and to kind of take the step to move somewhere else, especially if, you know, you're used to having your, your family and your built in support system always there around mm -hmm. you and making the step to, to move forward for your, you know, your kids and your media family and yeah. you know, coming over here. So yeah, that yeah. is a big step. Yeah, it was, it was big. It was really big at the time. And, um, I'm so thankful obviously that, that I did and yeah. really listening to just God's calling for, for me to be here. So yeah. Well, it is a great place to be. I'm also not from yeah. Wisconsin. And so <laughs> and we made the step to come over here. So I, I also relate very much in loving it too. Yeah. Um, there is also somewhat of a, just natural support system built into the area, I feel like. And mm -hmm. so I, I hope you feel the same thing. It's Absolutely. Really great. Yeah. And it also sticking it's with, with the HR um, piece. <laughs> um, I work in nonprofit. We're also very small. And so I very much understand the need to just say like, there's a gap there and I'm going to figure that out. And especially in HR, it's so people, uh, people to people yeah. focus that, yeah. you know, it's, um, it's a it's a hard job because yeah. of that as well. I mean, amongst all the other pieces, but um, yeah, really uh, relating to those and, and learning on the fly. <laughs> yeah, I learned a whole lot in a very short amount of time. Yeah. Um, but again, I had some really, really, and still do have some really great resources because yeah. I certainly I'm still learning. I still yeah. don't know have all the answers, but um, I lean heavily on those on those great resources. So yeah, yeah great I area. Mean, that's, that's part of the the way to be successful is figure out your resources and who's on yeah. your side and on your team and, yeah. and lean into that. So yeah, absolutely. That's great. Yeah. So all good. Um, can you share an example of a time that you brought another woman into a leadership position on a project or a cause? Um, and what, I guess, what did you learn in that process? Yeah. So I started to think about that and I'm actually going to tell you about a time that that's happened um, most recently. Mm -hmm. So since I started, um, and develop the HR department, I was handling all of the HR functions. Mm -hmm. So all the day-to-day -day and everything. And even though we're a smaller company, it, um, it was got to be a lot mm -hmm. um, for me to just handle on my own. Yeah. So last year, I made the decision to hire um, an HR administrative assistant. Um, little did I know that she would come in and just hit the ground running. <laughs> I mean, she has been such a phenomenal addition to our team and was not expecting that at all because um, I was hoping, you know, having somebody come in, just handle those, some of the HR functions for me, yeah. takes them off my plate. Um, but she has really, she's very driven and she's really proven herself. And so uh, very recently, I've actually um, promoted her to HR manager, nice. um, which is, has been so great. She, um, so she's now a part of our leadership team. 
she's going through the um, transformational leadership program through oh, the chamber. Fabulous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and she um, is doing a fantastic, fantastic job. Yeah. Um, and I think the biggest thing that I've learned um, since doing that is it's okay for me to let go. Um, obviously, with starting and developing that department, I um, that's my baby. And yeah. I was really, you know, I was in all of the day-to-day -day functions. And so um, by letting her take over and handle some of those things, it has given me the opportunity to lead mm -hmm. and to be able to grow and develop. I definitely don't consider myself like a natural born leader or anything, um, but I have worked extremely hard um, on my leadership skills, on my personal growth mm -hmm. as well. And I wouldn't have been able to do that if I didn't have, if I didn't have her and if I didn't have somebody to, to take on some of those things. So, yeah. Yeah. It really kind of sounds like, um, while you gave her, obviously, what a great opportunity that you saw and gave her, that she helped you as well. I mean, it's a yeah. very much a reciprocal relationship mm -hmm. and that she helped you also sort of maybe even inadvertently become uh, more of a leader that you wanted to be. Yeah. You know? Yeah, um, absolutely. 100%. Mm -hmm. And she, um, her and I were a really, really good team. Uh, so that's, that's so what cool. I definitely consider. And she's very, I mean, she's very easy to lead, obviously, yeah. but um, yeah, by having her and her being so driven and as great as she is, um, it's definitely opened up a lot of opportunities for me to be able to work on my leadership skills. Yeah. So it's been really, really fantastic. Oh, I just love that yeah. so much. Yeah. I always, I, I, it, the, having someone also that you work with that you know is just, I call them your go-to people. Mm -hmm. You know they're going to be there. They're, you know they're going to stick up for you at, or, you know, help you out and always be there. Just, it makes you, it makes us better. So yeah, it's, it's yeah, a, that's, that's definitely so cool. her. I love so yeah, that. it's great. I hope she watches this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm sure she will. <laughs> she probably is right now. <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, let's see. Uh, my my last question: Can you share examples of how you serve others in the community? Yeah. So um, my faith is really important to me. So a lot of the times when um, I volunteer, I mainly will volunteer for religious based mm -hmm. volunteer opportunities. Um, but I think the biggest area um, and the biggest impact that I'm having right now is I'm part of a leadership team um, for an organization called the MomCo. Mm -hmm. um, it's actually a ministry out of um, Highland Community Church, mm -hmm. um, and it's short for the Mom Community, mm -hmm. and it has made such an impact on my life. Mm -hmm. um, I, we meet on the first and, or the second and the fourth Tuesday morning of every month. Mm -hmm. um, that's our bigger group. And then our leadership team meets on the first and third Tuesday mm -hmm. of every, um, of every month. And it goes through the school year. Mm -hmm. um, and when we get together, it has been so great to be able to have a community of moms. Um, and we're able to connect and fellowship and support. Um, and encourage one another. Being a mom, obviously, is so rewarding, but it is by far <laughs> the hardest job I have ever had. And so it has been such a blessing to have the community of moms and community of women um, to be able to get together. So um, mainly our, our groups on Tuesday mornings, um, those are made up of a lot of stay-at-home moms, um, as well as maybe some part moms who work part-time or have flexibility uh, mm -hmm. with their work schedule. Um, but we actually started this year, the first year of having a group in the evenings mm -hmm. um, on Thursday evenings, which has been um, so great for those moms who are maybe either homeschooling yeah. or, um, or if they don't have that flexibility right. with their work schedule um, and we're, are working full-time. So it has been, like I said, such a, mm -hmm. such a great way for us to all get together and fellowship and connect and be able to support and encourage one another. Um, I've definitely leaned on yeah. all of them so much. <laughs> and so that has been really great. And I'm so blessed to be on the leadership team for that, to be able to give now my time back and, and all of that. So, yeah. I, that's really awesome to kind of find the, the other women and the people that you can feel like you can like lock arms with mm -hmm. is kind of what I call it. And, and, work toward um, 
common goal and have those, I guess, moments where you can just really connect and be honest Yeah. as well. Sometimes I feel like, especially in the workplace, that can be a difficult uh, place to feel like you're truly 100% yourself, truly honest, and can truly have those open, you know, no, no holds a conversation. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So a lot of our group, um, our group time, we have either videos or we have speakers, we have activities, mm -hmm. um, and there's discussion time in there oh. as well, a time for us to be vulnerable and yeah. be able to say, this is really hard, yeah. and us be able to connect and be able to pray for one another and work through those times. So, yeah. Yeah. It's well, that's really so awesome great. that you're you're leading that and you see so much value in it because we really the 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 folks and the women who lead those kinds of groups and initiatives are really what open the doors for the others and hopefully mm -hmm. creates gives the others the 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 opportunity that maybe one day they're also going to become a leader when when the yeah. time comes for you to step aside or whatever that may be. So it's yeah. really helping such a broad group. Yeah, it's been such a blessing in my life, so I'm so happy that's to awesome. have it. Yeah. That's fabulous. Yeah. Um, well, that was my last question. Is there anything oh, awesome. else that you'd like to add? No, I don't think so. I'm so appreciative of you being here, though, and thanks yeah. for putting up with me. <laughs> and my nervousness. It's, great, it's good to get to know yeah. you all, so thanks yeah. so much. Um, I will kick it back to Brian. Great. That was a great interview, Olivia, Beth. And uh, Beth, I apologize for getting your last name. Oh, We're that's a, okay. A little bit off. And yeah. Of course, I should have asked you before we started. Happens all the time. Beth, Beth or Trittine. Congratulations on being a finalist yep. for the Athena Award. And Thank Olivia, you. thanks for all your help this week with all the interviews. Um, this is the, like I said at the start of the program, uh, or the interview, this is the second to last interview. We've got one more um, coming up at the top of the hour, and um, that's with Laura Streck, and uh, that'll complete it. If you missed any of the interviews, they're all available on the Facebook page uh, and on our YouTube channel. And um, if you have interest in joining us for the Athena Award, which is really an awesome program, um, great opportunity to recognize some great local leaders. Um, that program is coming up on Thursday, November 21st. Uh, uh, it's a lunchtime program at the Holiday Inn and Suites in Rothschild, and we'd love to see you there. Um, you can find registration information for that program on lostchamber.com. So again, Olivia, Beth, thank you, thank you. and uh, we will be back with one more of these interviews in just a bit.